Moving things right along, I'd like to present um, the City of San Jose Bridge and Culvert Asset Management. Um, presenting will be David uh, uh, Gentunen, uh, Matt McDonald, and Frank Farshidi. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for staying to uh, hear our presentation. So this will be a team tag between me and Dave uh, uh, about our bridge story. So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'll cover half of the presentation and then I'll uh, hand, it, uh, hand it off to Dave to cover the rest. So for those of you uh, interested about San Jose, so city of San Jose is located in the Bay Area, California. We are uh, the third largest city in, uh, in the state of California with a population uh, just a uh, little, uh, you know, just about $1 million, uh, about $1 million, uh, as of 2021. Uh, our infrastructure, as far as uh, infrastructure, we have uh, over 2,530 foot equivalent in terms of lane miles, as everybody's familiar with that. And that translates into 4,000. 300 lane miles of streets and also we own and uh, we are in charge of 245 uh, bridges and that uh, you know the breakdown of that is uh, 159 are on the national bridge inventory and 86 are non uh, NBI we call them which are locally owned by the city and you know uh, we need to uh, we're in charge of inspecting those so overall that's that's the size of our network uh, before I st uh, get into the goals and objectives that we wanted to do with our bridge management system, I want to tell you our story and uh, our journey how, and, or where we started. So my division and uh, what we do in, uh, in, under infrastructure, uh, we're, we're uh, primarily geared towards pavement. Back in 2018, uh, before we had the funding, uh, the funding that we, we had for our bridges the 250 bridges that I mentioned was only $150,000 uh, for maintenance. Uh, so when I, uh, you know, uh, I kept telling my boss that, you know, this bridge uh, network that we have is a critical uh, asset. We, you know, we're not giving it this uh, attention, but there were no funding, local funds. But the good thing that happened back in, uh, you know, November 2018, uh, City of San Jose put out a, a successful bond measure uh, that was uh, uh, successfully passed. It needed two-thirds votes, it, it was passed. It allocated uh, $300 million for pavements, and also uh, they tagged uh, $20 million uh, earmarked for bridges, for uh, public safety measures. So it was exciting times, you know, that got us started. So that's how we, uh, our journey started. So uh, we got, uh, we secured the funds and we wanted to, do it right. So we own because we knew, you know, uh, back then we we had one shot, and you know we want to definitely make the most out of the funds that that we got uh, and leverage that as much as we can to match it with the federal dollars or whatnot. So uh, to build a foundation, right? So uh, just kind of uh, looking at the payment asset that we have, uh, we wanted to kind of you know build a system. We wanted to approach it systematically. Uh, the, the system that we had in place was uh, mainly all paperwork and, uh, you know, it's getting the inspection reports. So Caltrans, which is the DOT in California, they do all the NBI inspections every three years and they will just send us these uh, paper copies. And that's still the practice with other local agencies. But we wanted to do better, you know, being at, uh, you know, Bay, uh, at the Silicon Valley said, you know, we we need to modernize this system and have a better way of uh, optimizing and uh, using an efficient system of, uh, for maintenance. So that's how our journey started back then. So uh, we have been working with uh, uh, consultants to build that because we, again, you know, we didn't have any in-house uh, expertise either. So, uh, you know, for those of you, uh, you should also know, you know, my my primary background is pavement. I'm actually here uh, to, um, trying to learn as much as I can from all of you and talking to vendors uh, about bridges and bridge management and uh, maintenance. So uh, what, are, what were our goals uh, for building a bridge man system, uh, management system? Uh, first, we wanted to understand, you know, what is the 
uh, backlog. What is our maintenance backlog uh, in terms of dollar amounts, right? So, uh, like I said, we had that funds, but we wanted to understand, you know, what is our deferred maintenance backlog, and uh, what are, what's uh, you know what is the condition of our network, right? Just holistically looking at the network level, not just individually, but overall network level. Uh, where do we stand? Because we have a similar system for payments. We wanted to just again, uh, you know. Uh, go off of that model that was successful actually in uh, terms of getting that uh, bond measure passed. So, uh, and, and lastly, you know, uh, using this as a decision uh, making uh, tool and optimization uh, that Dave will cover with, you know, with annual budget that we're going to give it and moving forward. So, uh, as far as uh, preservation projects, right, so what, what are some of the pre uh, preservation uh, works that we have been doing? So uh, since 2019, so with, that, with the passage of that money, uh, we also didn't want to waste time. We knew that, uh, you know, the longer we wait, you know, it's, uh, the worse it's going to get. So we wanted to be proactive. We started doing proactive maintenance. So we, uh, we have been doing uh, a lot of these deck treatments, metacolite. <laughs> Sealing polyester concrete on uh, on on the bridges that are in a good state, you know, just to extend that life and uh, make sure uh, we're extending the, do the dollars out as well. Uh, so there is a program uh, that you guys are probably very familiar with. Uh, it's called BIC B uh, Bridge Investment Credit that uh, we have in California, where if you spend uh, money on the maintenance, you can bank that uh, money for future rehab replacement projects that could be used as your local match. So we figured even if we just put all of that $20 million in that big, it would give us $80, $90 million in terms of uh, overall funds that we could maybe use for, uh, for those poor bridges. So we've been, yeah, you know, uh, again, we wanted to be proactive and uh, just uh, start the work. So, with that, with, with that in mind, you know, uh, 2020 is when we just uh, really got, uh, you know, got uh, going with, uh, with, with our system. So this is just, again, 2020 was still before we had our BMS in place. And uh, we worked with the consultant to just uh, give us some project selection that we could go off of and uh, work with. Again, we don't want to, uh, you know, just randomly do the work. We wanted to have a systematic approach to it, so uh, we would uh, spend our dollars wisely and efficiently. Now, if we uh, open up the hood and look under the hood, you know, what do we have as far as our inventory and network? So, uh, like I mentioned, we uh, divided into NBI and non-NBI bridges. We have 159 uh, national bridge uh, inventory bridges. These are uh, typically, you know, larger uh, bridges that uh, carry uh, vehicular traffic, very important uh, 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 part of our traffic network. Uh, also, 86 bridges that are locally owned by, by, San, uh, by, by us. By that, I mean uh, locally inspected as well. It has to be locally inspected. So uh, NBI then gets further uh, broken down to, uh, you know, also... Uh, vehicular versus uh, cr uh, railroad crossing. So we have 21 of those and uh, one pedestrian. As far as the type of bridges that we have, our network and inventory again, uh, you know, so a lot of yellow and uh, brownish uh, color that you see on this slide, right? So the, the yellow is uh, mainly reinforced concrete type of bridges uh, versus brown is pretty stressed. So, so our, the majority of, uh, of our network is reinforced concrete. Uh, uh, so uh, how old are they? Uh, so this slide you know, uh, gives you just an uh, idea of uh, the uh, age of our infrastructure. On average, and Dave and I, we were talking about this, uh, I think we have, a little, uh, you know, we're 60 plus. As you can see, there was uh, definitely a lot of bridges that were built starting in 1960s and onward, you know, the, Peak of it was 1980s, I think. But you know, so uh, the condition. So you know, after we uh, we did some preliminary work uh, on the planning and inspection side, we wanted to uh, know you know the condition. Uh, 
So 41% are actually are in good uh, condition. We were surprised, and actually, you know, in a good way, because uh, we thought, you know, it could actually be worse, but uh, pleasantly surprised that 41% uh, were still in good condition. Uh, but our focus and, uh, you know, motivation for this, for building this BMS system is definitely that bar in the middle, right? So the yellow, the one that's at rest. So we, uh, we look at that and that's, an, uh, you know, that's the opportunity for us to, uh, you know, make that or, you know, 44% uh, of these, 40% uh, of our network that's in that yellow category, we wanna move it to the green and keep it in that green condition for a long time. So that's our definitely, uh, uh, goal and that's you know that's how we know big picture that's how we could uh, optimize our dollars and we, we definitely need to take care of the poor poor stuff as well right so just like any asset we got uh, we have to allocate funds for those we are uh, looking at federal grants we were looking at you know we're very closely monitoring the new infrastructure bill that was passed there are a lot of sustainability and resilient infrastructure aspects attached to the uh, new funding grants that uh, are coming our way, but we're keeping our eyes open and we will definitely like to leverage our local funds that I mentioned uh, was passed in 2018 uh, for those opportunities in the next three years. So we know the money is coming in the next three years is gonna be, uh, but we, we also, uh, we feel like we are well equipped because uh, we, uh, we have our system in place now. It took us. Uh, it took us a while, but you know we uh, were pre uh, pretty happy. So, just uh, as a uh, kind of a precursor to our BMS system, uh, we were also wanted to get some uh, prioritization list and just kind of still, you know, every year we want to do some maintenance projects. So, we generated this list and we used some criteria that you know common sense criteria uh, that would help us in selection uh, process. Uh, that we could, you know, also uh, when we're talking to our policymakers and uh, elected officials, say, well, why are you selecting so and so bridges? And by the way, we have 10 council districts in the city of San Jose, so we have 10, uh, you know, elected officials that we, you know, uh, we got to get, uh, we have to convince when we are uh, putting projects out. So, uh, so that's where we are now, and uh, you know, like I said, we our BMS is uh, definitely ready in place now. And uh, at this point, I'll hand it off to Dave to talk about more about our modern. Uh, I think uh, it's a pretty uh, modern, world class. We want to call it bridge management system. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, yeah, as Frank pointed out, that we started this journey. Um, in 2020. And this slide here is just a, a call out to the TSB2, part of the Bridge Preservation Partnerships, the National Working Group on Bridge Management Systems. We've started that up again. Kent Miller out of Nebraska and myself are co-chairs of that. And when we started that a number of years ago, for the state DOTs, we were trying to identify and get people thinking about where are you at with your, you know, the, how advanced you are with asset management. Are you basic? Basically, you know, I have bridges, you know, and I might know where they're at. Um, intermediate, okay, I'm doing some prioritization, as Frank said. I might be, uh, you know, doing some network level of assessment, uh, good, fair, poor. But basically, you're picking bridges meeting today's needs. Now, when we get to advanced, now we start talking about the things that, like Ash to Wear BRM can do, Agile Assets, uh, Structures Analyst, Dayton D. Tims, Inspectex, I think he's got something going on. You know, so the, the, you, you have these bridge management systems, and what do they do? They help you manage for the future. They help you do life cycle planning, benefit cost analysis, and the big buzzword is bridge project level optimization. So, uh, like Frank said, our, our journey started at BASIC, and then uh, New Jer uh, <laughs> New Jer San Jose went to, in, into the intermediate level, into prioritization. Now I'm going to talk about they're at an advanced level now. So advanced bridge management, uh, managing bridges for the future. 
So what's a bridge management system? Well, it's these tools that do these specific things. Now, the FHWA has minimum standards for a bridge management system. Uh, and I don't have time to go over that today, but all of these systems, that's what they do. But end to end, they help you manage things for the future. They forecast for the future to help you optimize what you're doing. Uh, now, at the heart of all advanced bridge management system is benefit cost analysis, comparing what benefit am I getting for this treatment for this cost and comparing that to a preservation activity versus, let's say, a replacement activity. And I like to show this super simple example. For example, if I replace a bridge, my service life is, let's say, 75 years. Uh, it might cost me $1.5 million. Well, my benefit cost ratio is 75 divided by 1.5 million is 50. Uh, now, if I look at, uh, if I'm doing some type of overlay or like a methacrylate deck treatment, Okay, I might be buying 10 years of service life, and uh, if the methacrylate deck treatment folks are saying, well, no, Dave, you're getting more life out of it than that. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't think about that when I did the slide. Uh, but let's say it costs $50,000. So if I, if I do a, a preservation action, and I'm buying 10 years at $0.05 million, okay, I, I have um, a benefit cost ratio of 200. Okay, if I compare that, replacement is a benefit cost ratio of 50. Uh, preservation action is 200. Now, I've done a lot of these, so I can tell you most well-chosen preservation have much better benefit cost ratios than a rehab or replacement. Thus, we're immediately showing the value of preservation. Uh, this just shows in Agile Assets, the benefit is actually the area between two curves, the do-nothing curve and the curve after you take an action. So there's different ways to show benefit. For example, BRM is total utility, uh, you know, but, um, you know, you need to, for whatever action you get, there has to be a benefit to it. So uh, when we um, start working with an agency like uh, San Jose, uh, first we talk about their business process. What's important to you? What type of treatments do you do? Uh, we do the charts that Frank was showing. What kind of bridges do you have? Uh, and we develop a concept of operations that we actually write a document called an engineering configuration document, which communicates to the client, okay, what are we going to build for you? And it, com it communicates to our programmers what to actually build. So if you're going to forecast in the future, you need to know your, how fast your bridges are deteriorating. So the great news is we have the National Bridge Inventory. So we look at California local agency bridges and for the general condition ratings and now maybe for the elements even too that we can create these deterioration models. Here's an example for uh, looks like superstructure deterioration uh, for California local agency bridges. And we input this into the, the bridge management system. We identify the treatments. You know, um, Frank showed a list of treatments that they do. Uh, what treatments do you are you considering when you go out to see the vendors? Well, you know, should I consider doing that? Uh, you know, you can do this type of analysis to show you the value that that might be for you. Of course, we're doing benefit cost analysis, so we need to know the cost of the treatments in the units used in your BMS. Uh, and th this is kind of a fun part, because we start, and you want to get your, your bridge inspectors, your bridge managers, your bridge designers, maybe consultants that work for you. And what do humans do? When do I do a methacrylate overlay? When do I repair my substructure? And it's a lot of fun. You build these things into the advanced BMS as decision trees. So you do all that work, and it's a fair amount of work. I, I, I won't lie to you. But once you, once, you, once you do that, you learn a tremendous amount about yourself and your bridge network. And when you get the system running, uh, if we were talking BRM, you have the BRM pyramid, you get to the top of that and you can hit the magic optimization button. Uh, and what it does, it gives you a recommended list of projects based upon the constraints of your budget. And you can have those budgets, uh, those, those treatments or projects categories as preservation, rehab, replacement. And so you're getting a feel, well, what kind of balance, what kind of mix of fixes should I be doing? 
Now here's just some examples. Um, the uh, Agile Assets uh, BMS system for San Jose is up and running. And here's just a couple examples of treatments, or if, excuse me, of scenarios that we've done. Now I always like to run, the first scenario I'd like to run is a no budget scenario. And we're testing our deterioration models. The second budget I like to run is an really, really big budget. So if, if I had the money, unlimited money, this is what the system would pick. Now I'm testing my triggers. And so also some people like to report their unmet need. So you could show this as your unmet need. So it's not only you know how much money that I would need to fix everything that's being triggered, but what kind of work is it? Is it a preservation? Is it a rehab? Is it a replacement? And you, if you can't see it on the right, but it's divided into actual treatments too. Uh, then we'll run a budget. Uh, here's an example of a 10-year scenario with a $3 million annual budget. Uh, and with the size of a local agency, you know, sometimes it's not, it, it's, uh, you can see that, you know, uh, different trends that'll develop over time. Like right now, um, I think it's hard for me even to read here. But, you know, I think we've got a couple replacement projects and some preservation and, and uh, actually more or less rehab, preservation, and every once in a while I'll throw in a replacement project, which makes sense for the size of their inventory. Uh, but, you know, they get that, this list of uh, possible projects. Now, nobody's going to go out and do that exact list. They're going to review it, see if it makes sense, but it's a really wonderful starting point. It gives you an idea of what's coming, because it's not just doing it for this year. This was a 10-year scenario. It's giving you this list of recommended projects over the next 10 years. Uh, and, you know, you can see how you're doing for your performance measures. Now, the most common perfor performance measures are your percent good, uh, with this budget, we can see that San Jose to percent good is going to go up, and their percent poor is going to go down, which I guess is a good thing. So, um, advanced bridge management systems. One, it's not just for state DOTs anymore. Uh, progressive local agencies like San Jose are starting to see the value of this and starting to do it, and some of them are doing it really well. Now, uh, when you pick your best benefit cost ratio bridges, it, you're picking bridges on what we call the efficient frontier. Uh, and that means that you know, you're spending your money wisely. And isn't that what we're all here to do? Is we have a budget, we have to have credibility with the board or your legislature or whoever's, you know, you, you, and it gives, gives you credibility that, okay, if you give me the money, I'm gonna do the very best I can with it. Uh, and with that, uh, we can answer any questions if we have a moment. I just forgot to add, uh, since we have built a, a system, we're also hiring, so if anybody is interested, <laughs> please talk to me. Yeah, we're hiring engineers, and uh, if you like mild climate, we have that. So, Except for this year, it was been, it's been raining a lot this year. Very interesting presentation. Thanks so much. Um, question uh, for Frank. The non the, uh, non non-BI bridges, what are those? Those culverts under 20 feet, or how, how is that Yeah, the, Yeah, the non-NBI, very good question. Yeah, the non-NBI bridges, actually, they're uh, very similar to NBI. So National Bridge, it's, uh, it's just we uh, don't get those inspected by DOT for, for free. So we have, to, so that's the only difference, and they're a little bit smaller, but they're still vehicular bridges and important uh, infrastructure for us. And we have 86 of those, yeah. Hey, uh, this question is for Dave. So I'm just curious if any of the bridge management systems have a way to uh, utilize some kind of machine learning or to, to actually <laughs> quantify in the, in the future the true benefit cost. Because right now, you're, you, you have to reach a pie in the sky and you throw a number in there, which may be a pretty good number, but I guess the the, I'll go back to the question. Do you, do you feel as though any bridge management systems that are out there are a way to, to continue to track the, the cost and the life cycle extension, do some comparative stuff to, to put true benefit to cost data into the optimizer program? Yeah, that's a really good question. And when uh, we also do the FHWA BMS workshop, and we really stress during that three-day workshop is these systems 
Only give what you put into it. Now, that's not saying a bad thing. Us humans, us bridge engineers are pretty darn smart. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting that into the system. Now, our, our company does have people that do uh, artificial intelligence and stuff, and that's PhD level stuff. I don't think that any BMS is doing artificial intelligence to determine what the best user inputs are yet, but maybe 20 years down the road we might be there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are going to have a panel session on asset management at the end of this session, and so I think if we have some more questions, we can get into it a little bit more then, if that's okay? Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.